So I wanted to talk about uh, my experience with, with, with altitude. Maybe it might help somebody. And I'll start this off by saying I'm not a doctor. I don't you know, profess to know anything. Just some guy who uh, has had some experience with it. So during the daytime, I'm great. Man, I can go 13, 14,000 feet. I really couldn't tell you if it was um, 8,000 or 14,000. I feel completely normal. Breathing is normal. When you, when, uh, you hear me talk in my videos, I'm at 12,000 feet. I'm not, <sighs> I mean, I feel normal. But at nighttime, babies, that's where the rubber meets the road. About 2 a.m. Um, can be just a bear. And um, some people can do it and some people can't. Um, I can do 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 feet okay without feeling my sleep is impaired. Once I get up about 8,500 or 9,000, I start to really feel uh, like I'm getting less sleep and above 10,000, it's a rough night. So some people can go and sleep at 10,000 from sea level and just be great. Some people can't sleep at 6,000. My, my wife tells of a friend of hers who went to sleep at Lake Tahoe and that's just 6,000 feet. And uh, she said, he said he woke up at 2 a.m., couldn't breathe, put all the wife and kids back in the car and drove all the way back down the mountain. <laughs> so some people it's really profound at nighttime. Nighttime seems to be the worst time. So um, I was reading a uh, textbook on it and it was saying uh, most altitude uh, doctors feel it takes six to eight weeks to fully adapt to a eight to 12,000 foot altitude. Uh, who has that kind of time? I don't. Um, I was probably at eight to 10,000 feet for a good 10 days. Um, and I still uh, would wake up at night uh, feeling like I wasn't breathing right. Um, so a lot of people that we saw this summer were having a hard time sleeping at uh, night. So um, there's different kinds of, of altitude problems. One is where your lungs get a little bit too to plump with water. That's called high altitude pulmonary edema. And you might cough a lot and you'll be too short of breath. Uh, one is where your brain swells a little bit. <laughs> nice, huh? Uh, and that can be one where you get nauseous or have severe headaches. Um, my farm, I never coughed. I never had a headache. I've never had a headache at, at just very high altitudes. Um, I would just wake up feeling like I wasn't breathing. Um, so there's a thing in pulmonology called Chains Stokes Breathing, C-H-E-Y-N-E-S, Stokes, S-T-O-K-E-S. Chain Stokes is a curious thing that the brain will let your oxygen levels drift down until it reaches a critical point, then make a gap. So it kind of looks like you'll, uh, you'll be trying, trying to just fall asleep and you'll be breathing normally, and then the next breath will be a little bit less deep, the next breath a little bit less deep, less deep, less deep, until you pretty much stop breathing and then you go <gasps> so you can imagine you do that every two minutes it's pretty hard to sleep it's not a safe thing to do either um, so but that was happening to me and I thought you know the typical advice is well go to 6,000 feet stay there for a night then go 1,500 feet or less up so say 7,000 and spend that a night there and go to 8,000 a night there by by the fourth fifth night you should be doing good at 10,000 feet I spent a week at 10,000 feet. I, I think I was up to 14 days uh, above 8,000 feet and I still wasn't sleeping. I was sleeping better. You know, I was getting used to it. Uh, so got down to where um, I saw a doctor and uh, uh, was prescribed Diamox and that made all the difference, let me tell you boys and girls. Uh, I slept the first night, I probably slept about 50% better and the second night I slept like a baby. So. Um, that is some great stuff. God bless a man who invented Diamox because I wouldn't be able to go to sleep above 10,000 feet if I didn't have it. Um, so there are some side effects. Uh, one for me was it does make you pee more. Um, so you might be getting up at night out of the tent a couple times at least to pee. I'd rather get up out of the tent and pee and feel like I'm breathing like a champ than feel like you can't breathe. Uh, the second one is it may make your fingertips uh, kind of tingly. And uh, that only lasts about 10 or 15 minutes. That happens about an hour to three hours, four hours after you take the pill. Um, it got to where I liked that part because I knew it was working. If I didn't feel that, that kind of just tingling, it's like, is the, did I take the pill? <laughs> so, so you become really paranoid. Breathing is a tough thing. Um, so as long as I have di Diamox, I'm golden. Uh, so uh, uh, that might be something that uh, people want to check out how well they 
do high altitude sleeping uh, uh, in an overnight trip before you go and commit yourself to uh, being three or four or five days back in the back country at high altitude. Okay, so I hope that's helped you, uh, and I'll see you out on the trail. Bye-bye.